Stephen, good morning. The, um, the, the criticism of uh, the team is one thing, but uh, it seems that your own position has been called into question after the, the draw the other night. Are you aware of, of, of the noise around, surrounding it and, and how you plan to deal with that? No, that's not what I, you know, I, we went on a staff run throughout the city this morning and uh, as we do regularly uh, when, we, when, we go, when we're uh, away together. And, you know, we just, uh, a, lot of, a lot of the Irish public are very positive, you know. Obviously, people, we're disappointed ourselves that we didn't win the other night, so um, that's irrelevant to me. You know, I think it's part of international management that comes with the territory and um, it's not something that I'm concerned about. Is it something that seeps into the players though? Um, we spoke to James earlier and he seemed to be very much aware of it. <laughs> Listen, um, we put in uh, an exceptional performance in Portugal. Um, you know, I was very pleased with that. We were really, really good in Portugal. Outstanding actually. And. You know, I've watched the game, watched the game last night against Azerbaijan again. Watched a repeat of the game, and you know, we played well for long periods in that game, and uh, dominated, and could have won at least four or five one, and uh, we just our finishing let us down, and we're disappointed with that. You know, I think um, obviously they've scored a wonder goal from twenty five yards, tor- nearly thirty yards into the top corner, and um, it's a brilliant strike, um, but. The players gave everything. The attitude was excellent. Played some great football at times, and um, you know we're disappointed not to win. Of course we are, but a lot of good play in that match, and the players showed a lot of quality at times. And at times we didn't. I thought we made mistakes also, but not everyone played well. But certainly uh, a lot of good passages to play in the match, and the match we should have won well. And deserve to win convincingly, but we just couldn't get that. We couldn't take our chances. But the confidence of the players must be low because of the. the mm-hmm. run of I don't. I don't accept uh, that. I don't accept that at all. The confidence of the players have displayed the confidence. If you take the four matches that people are talking about that we've lost, right, or the, the four matches we've, we that we've uh, in the campaign. You know, in the game against Serbia away and Portugal away, they're probably two of our best performances in the last decade away from home without question. We've lost 3-2 and 1-0. The players, um, you know, against Luxembourg, we haven't played well at all at home. That's a poor performance, but we still didn't deserve to lose the game based on chances, still had more chances. And the other night we dominated and should have won well. And, you know, I think, don't forget, this team had four, the spine of the team was sort of ripped out of it. Darren Randolph really been injured for a sort of a, period, a good period of time. Richard Kyo finishing with his action, Glenn Whelan. Uh, you know, Glenn just obviously uh, at the latter end of his career, been a, br- a brilliant player. And also David McGoldrick, who retired. So the whole spine is taken out of this team. We've taken the best young players that we've seen for probably a long, long time. And we've blooded a lot of players in that period. I think uh, you're not always going to get a level of consistency with that. Um, Our performances overall in in this campaign have been, bar the Luxembourg game, which we were very disappointed with, our performance, have been been good overall. I think with with Serbia and Portugal in the group and the spine been ripped out of the team did, and we haven't qualified for the World Cup since 2002 did anyone think that we were favourites to qualify or that we should qualify you know we, have, we certainly have a plan in place and that like I, I've taken the decision right or wrong that we would build a squad to be a really really competitive team to qualify for Germany 2024 okay now we, we did not try and win the games we went very close to winning Serbia and winning against Portugal Okay, away from home. We scored first goal in both games. We're brilliant football in both games. So I am, you know, I think I've taken that decision and collectively we did. And that's why, you know, I think, uh, um, you know, the, last week, last week against Azerbaijan was a good occasion. The supporters were brilliant. We started, like a, started brilliantly. They couldn't get that goal. They've scored a goal in 25 yards. They defended deep. We threw the kitchen sink at them, you know, 
so many attempts on goal and, and um, we, we missed the target. Our finishing could have been better. We, we have only ourselves to blame in that regard. But um, I think there's real progress overall, to be honest. And that's the way I see it. And that's why my staff see it and all the coaches see it. And there's a lot of people behind that. There's a lot of people who aren't, who just see, well, you're in a result, but that's not your job to develop the game here. That's not your job. Your, your job is just to get, win the next match, that's your job. And, and you know, that kind of nearsightedness doesn't create anything. Doesn't create anything. It might be, you might beat teams you shouldn't beat, but you'll never beat the teams that, you, you, you know, you can strive to beat. So you're trying to build something that, you can, that can actually be tangible over a period of time, and that can be successful. And that's the way I see it. Go ahead, Havard, please. Following up from that, then, that the aim is, is, is 2024 and the Euros, are you suggesting then that your contract should be renewed next summer, that you should be given more time to finish what you perceive as the long term job? Well, I've been given no assurances in that regard, or no, or and I've taken the decisions I've taken, regardless of the impact on on, on myself or, or here. I've not I've not been given any assurances in that regard. I think I've just been given full support by the FAI. People behind the scenes have been brilliant, and you know I think we, you know, so I think it's I've done it because it, it, in it you know we have a very very exciting squad emerging, a very very exciting squad emerging. And, you know, we've not had a huge pool of players to pick between the experienced players who are at the other end of their career and the young players that are coming through. There, is a, there has been a gap there for sure. But I'm very, very pleased with the emerging squad. And I think that uh, some of our performances have been excellent, like against Portugal the other day, um, where, you know, that was, that was the cruelest of fates, really, to lose that game, have it going into the 89th minute. And, um, you know, I think the players deserves, you know, deserve, have deserved better than they've got over the last few games because overall, against Azerbaijan, we threw the kitchen sink and we created so many chances and played well for long periods in the game and had so many attempts at goal. But um, we need to definitely improve our finishing. And it's not easy. Like Azerbaijan, they don't concede a lot of goals. 2-1 against Serbia, 1-0 against Portugal. You don't... It's not, they're not minnows, you know, these, these, these players are playing, that are playing in group stages of European competition and they certainly, uh, none of the games are, are, are easy. Um, so that's the way I see it. Thank you. Paul Walsh, please, to end the live section. Thanks, Derek. Hi, Stephen. Just, just on, on your last answer there, despite the good result, Despite the good performances, though, are you worried that the FBI board might decide that you won't get a contract extension and they might just focus on the results instead? Well, this is not about my, my contract's not, not up till next July. So this is not about my contract. This is about us preparing now for Serbia. You know, it's a very important game. Serbia, um, we did, you know, we had a brilliant game with them in Serbia. It's an outstanding game of football. We... They, they, they're a very good side. They, you know, Jovic was 60 million to Real Madrid. Vlavic to talking between 50 and 70 million out to the Premier League. They're not getting in. They're strikers that are not getting into the Serbian team at the moment. They're not getting in. So they have that level of depth. Uh, they're a great example to us what a nation can, can you know, certainly uh, in, in terms of producing players. Um, so we... Uh, we want to strive to get better. So it's going to be a real tough game. Obviously, they, uh, Mitrovic has already scored seven goals himself in the campaign. And he scored goals from nothing. I've seen his two, when they beat Azerbaijan 2-1, he created two goals from absolute nothing. And um, so it's, you know, we're going to have to be at our best against Serbia. They're a formidable team. And uh, we've got to make sure that we're ready and ready to go. It's their third game in six days. It's only their second, really, because they had a friendly and they were able to rotate. So we've got to, um, we've got to dust ourselves down, get ready physically, and give everything in front of our home support. We want our home support to really get behind us and be passionate as they were the other day. We want to, want to really uh, put in a strong performance here against, against Serbia.